I don't often find myself truly envious of console gamers, but today I am, because the PlayStation VR 2 headset is just plain better. And I don't mean better than the Google Cardboard that you have next to your tissue box. I mean that in some ways, it is better than anything that you can buy for PC gaming at all. I want an OLED screen so bad. And this, this one has it. And the most impressive thing is the price. The PSVR 2 comes in with specs better than a Valve Index at a price that's closer to a MetaQuest 2, meaning that for the 30 million of you who already own a PS5, you're ready to leap headfirst into the world of high fidelity VR gaming at an unprecedented price. That is, as long as you want to play one of these games. Yeah, out of the gate, it's got some downsides. And as a PC gaming and VR lover, you better believe I'm gonna be looking for them with an extremely critical eye. But if they can sell it to me, they've got a winner on their hands. Which, wait, that's not a winner. That's our sponsor. Big thank you to The Ridge for sponsoring this video. Hey, get rid of your old bulky wallet. The Ridge wallet will keep your pockets light and organized. Click the link below and use code Linus to save 10% off your purchase and get free shipping. The problem with comparing PCs to consoles is that it's never going to be quite apples to apples. However, there is one universal language, and that's money. So to level the playing field, we took the price of a PlayStation 5 with its shiniest, newest accessory, and we put together a competent, VR-capable gaming PC with a MetaQuest 2 and a USB-C tether cable. Now obviously, there are other ways to skin this particular cat. Rift S headsets on eBay, for example, are looking like a nice little snack at the moment. But given the wearable nature of a VR headset, I can sort of understand if some people would feel that it's kind of like buying secondhand underwear. So we opted for all new gear. If you want new underwear, by the way, lttstore.com. Oh yeah. I haven't fooled around with the Quest uh, since the last time we did a Quest video, though, to be perfectly honest with you. Bwah! Oh my goodness, I'm gonna be nauseated. It's having a really hard time tracking right now. Is it the lights maybe? The main reason I'm playing around with the Quest 2 right now is just to establish a baseline for latency, tracking, as well as image quality. Because what a lot of people don't realize about the Quest 2 is that Type-C connection is not actually capable of carrying DisplayPort. So it's sending all the display data over USB, meaning that there's a lot of compression. It really doesn't look that great, even with the quality of the lenses on this headset, especially when anything is moving quickly, which with rhythm games, like the one I'm playing right now, is a major concern. Just haven't touched one of these in a while and I wanted to hear the speakers and stuff. Still like the lightweight. It's kind of shocking given that the brain is actually in here and the controllers are okay as long as you uh, tape them closed so the battery compartment doesn't slip open all the time. I appreciate how you wore that for like three minutes and already have a ring on your face. Yeah. Okay, one, one have... sec, one sec. Oh, what's up? Uh, before you proceed. You want me to put on a PlayStation VR 2 hat? Yes. I mean, <laughs> sure. If I'm gonna film an intro declaring this thing God's gift to gamers before I even get a chance to put it on, I might as well wear the hat. Right out of the gate, I was really impressed by both the weight of the headset itself and the thinness and lightness of the tether. Obviously, removing wires entirely would be ideal, but if you're stuck with them, it makes a big difference having one that's not super heavy dragging off of you. And there's lots of other things that show Sony's experience here. The headband, for example, expands quickly and easily with this button to fit even the largest of noggins, and they've used a specially textured silicone rubber, both at the back and at the front, that's designed to A, be comfortable, B, block light from coming in at the top above the skirt here, and C, not feel sticky. In fact, this is cute. They put their little X square triangle circle icons here, just like they did on the inside of the cover of the PlayStation 5. I like the feel of this. The cushion's kind of two-stage. It's got a nice soft, half inflated bike tire kind of feel initially. And then if you go deep, there's kind of a, a, a stiffer, but still cushioned component behind it. Really like that. For the rest of the physical design, this button adjusts the position of the headset itself. So you can bring the skirt up against your eyes. We've got IPD adjustment. Thank you. It's physical, right? Yeah. Oh, thank goodness. External cameras for pass through and tracking. Power button, 
microphone, and easy access to the pass-through button so you can actually see your surroundings. Moving inside, we've got a nice sanitary silicone skirt to keep light out. We've got a sensor that tells the headset whether you're wearing it or not, and it's far less obvious, but there are IR sensors around the lenses here that handle eye tracking so that the PSVR 2 can actually tell where you're looking and render in higher quality depending on what part of the scene you are actually focused on. Now what you won't find is any kind of integrated speakers, which frankly is probably for the best because I pretty much promise you that their included three and a half millimeter earphones are going to sound a lot better than uh, what the Oculus Quest 2 has. Uh, let's just go ahead and get this plugged in. Right. And there we go. Stylish. You can really tell that this is not Sony's first kick at the can, but you can also tell that Sony is a Japanese company. On the one hand, it's not that hard for me to get a good seal. On the other hand, for comfort, I really like to wear the headset as close into my face as possible. And it is, <clears throat> this is my nose. <laughs> Well, you know that thing where Nintendo designed a ride for America that half of American men can't ride? I think sometimes, you know, the designers are not the same shape as some of the users and that's okay. I would still give it a solid B plus for comfort, which is saying a lot about any VR headset. And I really like that I'm able to block out almost all the light here without any pressure against my face. That's sick. I'm gonna lose the hat though definitely gonna be more comfortable. Oh, oh, I was aiming for that. <laughs> if you say that's a B plus, yeah. what is the Quest 2? The Quest 2 is okay, B. Really? Yeah. I think it's like A for the PlayStation and like C for the Quest 2. I hate this thing. I am just kind of used to it. Cause I had, a, I had a Vive before and it's a very similar mounting mechanism. So I've just spent a lot of hours in it. Moving on to controllers, the award for best improved goes to Sony, they're super easy to tighten on your wrist, equally easy to loosen, <sighs> really love that. And wow, they actually look like VR controllers with things like the ability to squeeze the grips here to close your hands and nice easy access to your dual joysticks as well as your circle X triangle square buttons. Really, I can't say I have much in the way of complaints they are a little heavy. People with large hands had trouble with the way it goes around them. Oh, large hands being a bit of a disadvantage. Once again, Japanese design, got it. Another little drawback of the controllers is that while they do support USB-C charging, they can't be charged while playing. So while I don't expect most of you to be playing for more than the four hour battery life would afford you, but if you forget to plug them in after a session, you might be hooped the next time you try to jump into VR. Uh, for that reason, I can see why Sony offers this $50 charging accessory. And honestly, it doesn't seem like a terrible value considering that it's first party and probably decent. Whatever complaints we might have about the PSVR 2 controllers though, they are nothing compared to the complaints we had about the pleasure wands of previous generation PlayStation VR experiences. Good riddance and goodbye. Enough talk, let's give it a try. Ooh, I like the haptics, it vibrates. Make sure you're holding your controllers. Yes, 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 mother. You know what? The pass-through is really good. Oh yeah. I mean, it's black and white, like it sucks or whatever, but it's very low latency. It's clear enough that you can easily just like do things if you need to, you know? Oh, well, I got hooked on a thing there, but that wasn't that bad. Oh, OLED. Oh, I want an OLED screen so bad. I can definitely see some rainbow effect on small white objects. Little tiny bit of fringing. I do wonder about the subpixel arrangement. I'm coming into this cold, guys. So uh, you're having the experience are RGB. with me. RGB subpixels. Yeah. Hmm, okay. If you go like this, you should be able to see kind of like a smearing behind objects if you're on an LCD display. Not on this. But that's not the highlight for me. It's the deep inky blacks and the fact that going around like this, there's so little in the way of motion blur or trails behind moving objects. Let's do Horizon Call of the Mountain. I'm really excited about this. Not only is this display extremely high resolution, it's 2000 by 2040 per eye, but I can already tell that compared to just about any other VR headset I've ever tried, the screen door effect is 
almost negligible. So that's the like the black spaces you can see in between the illuminated pixels. And I was expecting it to be a little bit cleaner in terms of fringing because it does use an RGB subpixel layout, but there is still some. And honestly, I think that just comes down to the fact that Fresnel lenses, these kind of ringed lenses, they're just not perfect. Okay. All right. So let's, um, oh, this is pretty unforgiving. Um, okay. <laughs> Like, I feel like, obviously, the, you know, the, this is a grass texture as opposed to an actual grass thing, but like, you could just tell, like, you just, you wanna interact with it, you know what I mean? Does this support HDR? Yeah. The way the sun and the shadows just, oh man, I, I ha having that experience, you know, where you feel like, you're, oh, well, okay, the wall also came up, but you know, you feel like you're actually looking over a cliff. <laughs> Okay, okay, tell me this. The eye tracking theoretically is boosting the graphical fidelity where I happen to be looking and lowering it elsewhere. I thought I would probably notice something like that. Uh, hold on, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go it's somewhere. It's super obvious, you oh, don't even hold, need to. Hold on, hold on. Wait, what, really? Yeah, it's so obvious on this display where you were looking. Where am I looking? Uh, at the triangly chummy on the right side of the screen. Shut up! <laughs> Why are you in my head? Okay, okay, hold on, hold on. What am I looking at? Uh, the fern that's like halfway down the thing. Stop. <laughs> no! <laughs> I can't tell, Alex. I can't tell. It's super obvious. Like the stuff that you're looking at, especially when you're looking out past something. Yeah. It's like super clear there and then everything around it's blurry. Wow, that is so cool. Here I can't tell because you're just looking at stuff, but like... You say this is obvious? I yeah. can't see it at all. It is super obvious. I can see it from 30 feet, like 25 feet away. Shut up! <laughs> it can't be that easy! Like, can you see it changing? Yes. Because our eyes are supposed to be so good at seeing motion. Why can't I see when things are shifting? Like, is it just sharpness? Yeah, it's like sharpness and like the resolution of the textures. Wow! Okay. Okay, where was I supposed to go? Ooh. Uh, oh, that is very nauseating for me. Oh yeah, this game just oh, absolute uh, puke town, especially for like, it's probably a lot of people's first VR experience and they are just gonna just puke all over the place. Uh, <laughs> oh no, I have to do this again. Uh, do not like, okay, okay. Uh, oh, oh, I feel like the world is falling away from me right now. Oh, okay. Oh! Bleh. Really? <laughs> eh. Oh, seriously? I have to. Are you. Are you... <laughs> Stop! I don't know if this is my favorite game ever, but. Boy, do I ever like this headset. Whoa, hi there! Oh, I'm okay. It's not always grabbing an arrow for me here. Now, one disadvantage to inside out tracking, that is using cameras on the front of the headset to track where your hands are, is that if you play a game, like say for example, Hollow Point, or <clears throat> this one that requires you to grab arrows out of your quiver, it's relying temporarily on just the gyroscopes that I assume are inside the controllers and those drift. So you can end up with inaccuracy and then it'll kind of like freak out a little bit when it comes back within range of the trackers as it corrects it. It's just the nature of the technology and there's nothing you can really do about it. Overall, I wouldn't describe it as terrible, but when things are fast paced, the last thing you want is, you see that? Did you see how my hand drifted there? Look at these apples. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying game. Look at this. Oh. How did I manage to bite it there? <laughs> what the? I want to eat the core. Some people eat the core. You're in a dystopian future and you're going to leave that much apple? Unbelievable. If I had to guess, 
I'd say it's not running at 120 hertz, but it's definitely running at a smooth 90. No, it won't let me jump off the edge. I try. Oh, I didn't try that hard apparently. Yeah, there's no jump button as far as I can tell. Oh, because you can actually jump. Ah! <laughs> okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. All right, let's try something different. I want this display on my index and I want it now. It's just so clean. Why can't I break things? Oh, well. Supercharge this plant's ability to grow. <laughs> Get that tea. Yeah, that's what a cup against a flower sounds like. Welcome to Whoa. the Star Tenders Academy. Oh my God, it's Riley! Internship. Yeah. <laughs> I, I knew I, I knew I'd heard of this Academy game liaison, for a reason. And I am delighted to inform you that your application was head and tentacles above the tens of others we received. That's the awesome. Now, Wait, the shut up. The stuff. character's name is Academy Riley. Is like Credit as in ears. These do a we pretty good job of blocking sound, but Alex, you're a hundred percent right. Settings. You they are not the best in ears I've ever heard. Quality, fine. But soundstage, yeah, it just, everything sounds like it's coming from inside my skull. Okay, I mean, that's probably enough of this anyway, right? Yeah. Something notable is that while Sony is plugging into a USB-C port, just like we did with the MetaQuest 2, it's not using the USB protocol. I'd be able to tell because there would be compression artifacts and blocking all over this. And there is not, it's clean. It's gotta be DisplayPort over USB or something like that. It could also be HDMI, I guess. Oh, it's right-hand drive. That you know, sure makes perfect sense. Oh, I need to, hold on. I, oh, I'm inside the car. Can you guys see what I'm seeing? Not bad field of view. It's 110 degrees. Not the best, not bad. I don't want to even focus on what I'm doing. I just want to look around in the city while I'm driving, you know? What I found re was really good was that I was able to focus a lot further down the track than I can with other VR headsets. Yeah, it's just because the resolution is so high and the screen door effect is so low. I did find it not quite as far down the track as I would have want, but like on the Rift S, I had to do the IPD like super weird, so I couldn't even focus on stuff that was close to me. So well, that's because on there. the Rift S, I don't think the IPD adjustment is true IPD adjustment, it's software. Ah. Oh man, those headlights in the mirror behind me. It's not the brightest display ever, but the HDR effect is very, very believable. Same thing with this little blue LED on the console in front of me, like it's annoying. Not in a, I can't play this game kind of way, but in a, it's realistic kind of way, you know? Oh! oh the reflections on this car, like what? Are those reflections being rendered at like 30 FPS? Uh, yes, they are. Huh. I wasn't even like noticing that though. It just, ah, oh, it's so pretty. Oh. Hi. The cold hard truth is as much as we might try, there's no way to make an apples to apples comparison between this and any PC VR experience, whether it's a more budget oriented one, like the Quest 2 setup that we've got here, or my index setup at home. There's trade-offs, right? On the one hand, neither of those PC VR headsets has a display that even begins to touch the one in the PSVR 2. But right now, the experiences available on the PlayStation 5 are fairly limited compared to the vast library of games that you have access to on the PC. That also ignores the additional utility of a PC. It doesn't just do VR. It also does, well, okay. This can run SolidWorks. <laughs> yeah, that, I was gonna say 2D gaming, but it can do all kinds of other things. It's just that, back to that gaming thing, the inconvenient truth here is that it's just plain not as good at it, either in 2D or in VR as the PlayStation VR 2. Not for the price anyway. It also took me like eight hours to set this up. That was like four. So as much as it pains <laughs> me to say, you know what, yeah, I'm gonna wear the hat, at least until I get a good OLED headset on PC. Then Sony would have a very hard time getting me back. Just like you're gonna have a hard time not loving this segue to our sponsor. Vessi, do you ever struggle figuring out what to wear in unpredictable weather? Vessi says that their shoes are 100% waterproof, keeping your feet dry in the wettest of weather. 
Their lightweight and easy to pack sneakers offer you reassurance when the snow and rain start coming down on your body and your mind. Putting them on and taking them off is super easy and their shoes are made from cruelty free products right down to the glue. Whether it's a rainy city or a rocky trail, the herringbone tread design is there to help stop you from slipping around. Wow, you don't want that. So treat your feet with Vessi and save 15% off with our offer code Linus Tech Tips at Vessi.com slash Linus Tech Tips. The URL makes a lot of sense. If you guys enjoyed this video, you might enjoy my full review of the Valve Index. I'm still using it to this day and I absolutely am loving it less. <laughs>